your brother Lanry Adeneko and welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel. I'm bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of our God, all powered by the Pastor Lanry Adeneko Center for Age Inspiration. <music> the daily gem devotion hour making you a gem to your generation gems upon the crown of jesus christ we are shining truth this morning on the other side of jesus oh yes and that's coming from our revelation the second chapter of it 22 to the end of that chapter we are praying right now father god we give you glory and praise and honor thank you almighty god for another chance to share together with your people and we trust god that these full moments together shall be supervised by you thank you father god in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen hallelujah and so, um, indeed, I will cast out. Okay, then let's begin from 21 instead of 22 now. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality. Can you remember the long rope? <clears throat> and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, and to the rest in Tyra Tyra, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put uh, on you no other burden, but hold fast that which you come, have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my words until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, it shall be dashed to pieces like potter's vessels. As I have also received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an hair, let him hear what is precious to the churches. Praise the Lord. All right, so we'll go back to 22 now. It says, I will cast her into a sick bed. Now, in King James Version, it just says bed. It didn't say sick bed. Some other versions also just say bed. In other words, if you remember the way uh, this uh, prophetess, this um, person Jesus called Jezebel, was described, when he says, I will cast her into a bed, and those who commit adultery with her uh, will get into great tribulation. Bed here will symbolize her very terrain, or her tool or her instruments, yes, um, implement in bringing up in doing all the things that she's doing. That is what bed will symbolize here because you say he described her as somebody who you know uh, teaches to do immorality and does immorality and doesn't uh, goes into idolatry and you know and all that. So when he says I'll cast her into a bed, that her very terrain or that her very instrument of the evil that she's doing, it is into it is on that very terrain of her own, and I'll put her, make her totally. Uh, incapacitated yeah that's it so when he says that i will cast her into that bed i will incapacitate her in her terrain i will incapacitate her even with all the things she has normally been using she will find herself totally incapable of using those things she's almost paralyzed completely and not able to perform her enterprise anymore that's what the lord was saying here you are seeing that how, you know, at times Jesus can get quite tough. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's what we are seeing here. And it says, those who commit adultery with her. You remember that um, the other time, uh, was it last week now we were on this? Uh, we were talking about not necessarily physical adultery. It could mean some other things like spiritual adultery, like uh, demonization, like seducing with a uh, sweet-looking doctrine, you know, um, like, um, like preaching wrong values, like misleading the people of God and all those things. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so those are some of the things. Well, but I mean by adultery here, I remember we said all that the other time, not necessarily physical adultery, which was there, but you know, these other aspects are also there. I've said all these things so that if you find some so-called prophet or prophetess, and um, you may not be, you know, may not be committing adultery physically, like we all, you know, will expect here, but doing some of the other things I'm describing, it is this same kind of people, you know, that the Bible has in the book of the religion. That's what I'm, that's why I'm emphasizing on all this. It doesn't have to be physical um, adultery at all. There are other forms of adultery. That's spiritual. Amen. It says, I'll cast uh, all those people that follow her into great tribulation. What does it mean? It means that her followers, her disciples, they'll get really worried. Yes, they'll get really worried. They'll get really concerned. They'll be running in skelter, trying to get her out of her state because a lot of the things that they are also benefiting or enjoying, quote-unquote, depend upon her. 
And if their, their, their boss or their leader, their inspiration is down, it's totally incapacitated. What becomes of us? So they're going to get into tribulation and a lot of worry, you know, and all that. And can you see that we can actually apply these things to us? That's the part of what we are taking, you know, the, in the past of the revelation, the things that can apply to us today. Some of these people who do what I called, what I have uh, called following, okay? People who have a cult followership. When the leader of their following or for their followership is down, the people who are in that cult, they feel jittery because their whole thing is supposed, it's about to collapse, about to come down. Yeah, they'll get into tribulation unless they all repent of their deeds. That's what he says. <clears throat> then let's go on. I will kill our children with death. And all the churches will know that I am he who searches. Let's look at that very quickly. I will kill our children. Who are our children? Her followers as well as the fruit of their ways. Not just, not just uh, our, our biological children. Okay? Her followers and the fruit of their ways. The people that will get into great tribulation here. And also the result of the things they are doing. You know, Jesus says that I'm going to exterminate them. I will kill all of their, their, their fruits and their, their ways. And the, yes, that's what he said. Praise God. <clears throat> and so... Again, we should look at this as well. That the Lord gives a long group, hoping that there will be some repentance. But, but when there's no repentance, he'll come swiftly, you know, and take a very sharp, uh, a short walk. He will make it a short walk and then clinically, you know, uh, um, dislodge these kind of people. Believe me, we are going to see this kind of thing happen in the church. Some people, the Lord has given a long group and who are misleading people and who are doing all kinds of, suddenly you are going to find out that you don't hear about them anymore. They've been cast into their bed. That very thing that they are using to deceive the brethren and get them demonized and, and get them misled. And, and, you know, even in the midst of all that, they suddenly are not going to hear about them anymore. Their followers are going to wonder what's happening to us. And the fruits of their ways. Amen. That's what's going to happen. I'm talking about the other side of Jesus today. <clears throat> Amen. And then he says, all the churches would know, get to know some. Before I go into that one. He says, I'll kill our children with death. That's what I don't understand, you know. <laughs> if he says, I'll kill our children, our fruits, and you know, the results of our ways and their followers and all those things, it's enough to say, I'll kill. But when he says, I'll kill with death, ah, that one's a little bit, <laughs> you know, it's um, kind of tautology. I don't know. I don't really know. But there must be some meaning to it that I've not got up till now. One day, the Lord will open my eyes and I'll get it. Praise God. But for now, I don't know why he has to put, I'll kill with death. I'll kill is already enough. Okay then, so let's go on. <clears throat> and all the churches will know that I am you who searches the heart and the mind. And I'll give to each one of you according to your work. Now this statement in the other part of uh, 23 is interesting. The, all the churches will know that I am he who searches the minds and the heart. What is that talking about? <clears throat> Excuse me. What he's saying is that some of these things, they're not going to be open. They're going to be hidden. The average person observing will not see some of these things we have described today. Some of the things that the Lord was quarreling with, a lot of people are not going to see it because there is, they, they are hidden. But the Lord says, it searches the hearts and the minds. Some of those things are going to be hidden. They are in the heart. They are in attitude. They are inside. A lot of us are not going to see it. But the Lord who searches the hearts and minds, he will do something about it. That's what he's saying here. And I think that's a big one as well. That's the more reason why we should be sensitive to the Spirit of God. So that you just don't follow somebody because everybody is following. Because some of these things you may not know. You don't want to put yourself in an outside position. God help us in Jesus' mighty name. Reward everyone according to your works. And so, to the rest... Um, who have not, who don't have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, I will say, <laughs> let me explain that again. The Lord was, uh, I don't know what they call this, in, this thing in English again now, I've forgotten. They used to call themselves the depths of God. But Jesus called them the depths of Satan. That's what happened. So he, he turned it around and called it depths of Satan. <laughs> you know, that's what has happened there. They used to behave as if, oh, we are the people who did, we, we have deeper knowledge. You know, you guys are still superficial. We have gone deeper. <laughs> Jesus said they are just the depths of Satan, you know. And then I'll put on, those of you who have not gone into all of that, I'll put on, you know, other body. In other words, he was the one that put a body on some of these other people that we have been reading about before. But what you have, Hold fast unto it until I come. That is one thing for everybody. The one that is good, that you know that this is it. Hold fast unto it until the Lord returns. Anybody who keeps my works unto the hand to him, I will give power over the nations, shall rule them with the rod of iron, as also I have received from my father, and on and on. In other words, 
all those rewards he's been talking about from all the churches we have been reading, we still have one or two more that we have been reading. They're actually the things that the Father has given him and he's just sharing with us as church. Isn't that wonderful? That's why we are called joint heirs, isn't it? To God be the glory. Thank you, my everyone, for being with us today. We really appreciate you and trust that you are doing your best to help us to hit our talent target. God bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs>